Welcome back, everybody. This is Mr. Paredes, and this is Lesson 5, Use Proportional Relationships to Solve Rate Problems. All right, this is pages 35 through 42 of your Into Math workbook. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's look at page 35, task one. The bar diagram shows how many inches a garden snail travels over time. At this rate, how many feet would the snail travel in 75 hundredths of an hour? All right, so I use this picture here. And I'm seeing that for every second, it looks like the snail is going 44 hundredths of an inch, right? So part A what is the unit rate in inches per second? Use conversion factors to convert the unit rate to feet per hour. All right, so I know it's 0 0.44 inches in one second, right? But now I want to go from seconds to minutes, right? And I know there are 60 seconds in one minute but I'm trying to find feet per hour, right? So I need to go from minutes to hours now. And I know there are 60 minutes in one hour. All right, now if we multiplied that whole top row, my seconds would cancel, my minutes would cancel, and all I'm left with is inches per hour. And in this case, we would have 1,584 inches per hour. But I need to get it in feet per hour, right? So I already have per hour. I just need to change that to feet. Well, I know one foot is 12 inches, and I need to divide by 12, right? So I can cancel out my inches, and I'll have only feet per hour. And in this case, it would be 132 feet per hour. All right, so it's very important when you're using your conversion factors to make sure you're putting the right ones on top, all right? They have to alternate. You can't have seconds on top but two times, right? You need to have, if you're going from seconds to minutes, you need to have seconds over minutes. And then if you're going to go change that to minutes per hour, then you need to have minutes over hours, all right, and so on. So let's look at part B. Write an equation for the number of feet y the snail travels in x hours and use it to solve the problem. So we have our equation here, right? y equals kx. k is the constant of proportionality, the rate. In this case, we know it's 132 feet per hour, right? Or 1 32 and X represents the hours okay now I would take this and multiply 132 times 0 0.75 right because we wanted to get that's what we originally wanted in the beginning so when I multiply those two out I would end up with 95 feet in 0 0.75 hours okay now part c what is the unit rate in miles per hour write an equation for the number of miles y the garden snail travels in x hours an important thing to remember is there are 5280 feet in one mile Okay, so what's important here is to set up our conversion factors, right? And they don't really have it set up for us here, but I know it's 132 feet per hour. Now, in order to get my answer in for miles per hour, I would need to multiply it by my miles right so I know one foot or one mile is 
5,280 feet. So I would have to divide 132 by 5,280. And that would give me 0 0.025 miles per hour. All right, so the equation would be y equals 0 0.025 times x. All right, so let's look at page 36, task two. The graph shows the number of gallons of water used over time in one lane of a car wash. At this rate, how much water would be used if the lane were used continuously from 8 a.m. to noon? Part A, what is the unit rate in gallons per minute? Use conversion factors to convert the unit rate to gallons per hour. All right, so looking at the graph, I have water used in gallons and then time, which is in minutes. The point that they give me is 630, right? This being my X, this being the Y. Now I know K is Y over X, right? So that means my constant of proportionality for this graph would be 30 over 6. And it's 30 gallons over six minutes. Now, if I reduce this, I get five gallons per minute, right? If I divide that, 30 divided by six is just five. So five gallons per minute. So I know I can fill that in here. That's an ugly five. Let me redo that five gallons in one minute, and I want to go to hours. So how many minutes are in an hour? 60, right? So now I want to multiply that five times 60, and that's just 300 gallons per hour, right? That's what we're left with. So for part B, it says write an equation for the number of gallons of water, Y, used in X hours and use it to solve the problem. Well, using the equation that we had last lesson, y equals kx, I'm just gonna fill in for k, right? And in this case, I found my new k for gallons per hour. So I have 300x. So from eight to noon is four hours, right? So that's what I have to plug in for X, four hours. So 300 times four would give me 1,200 gallons, All right? So that's how much, how many gallons we used in four hours. Now for part C, it says how much water would be used during the hours of 7.30 a.m. to 3.45 p.m., All right? We still have the same amount per hour, which is 300. Now I just need to figure out what I'm multiplying by. So from seven to three would be eight hours. And from 30 minutes to 45 minutes, that's 15 minutes, which 15 minutes out of an hour, which is 60, is one fourth of an hour, right? Or 0 0.25. So I multiply it by 8.25 and I will get 2,475 gallons. All right, so let's look at task three on page 36 and 37. The graph shows Michaela's earnings over time. Marcus's hourly rate is represented in the table. Who has a greater rate of pay and how much more than the other will that person earn in 40 hours of work? All right, so we have the table here that shows Marcus's earnings and Michaela's earnings are in the tape or the graph here. So for part A, complete the table, write an equation and graph Marcus's earnings A over time T. All right, so I wanna find K, right? 
That's the constant of proportionality for Marcus. That's going to tell me how much he makes per hour, which is going to be 19 over 2. Now, when I divide that, I get 9.50. So that's how much Marcus is earning per hour, right? And if I multiply that by 4, I'll get $38. When I multiply that by 5, I get 47 50 by 6 would give me 57. And to figure out how many hours it is, you can divide it, right? Divide 57 by 9.5, and that'll give you 6. 76 divided by 9.5 will give you 8, okay? Now, for the equation, I know my constant of proportionality, which is K, and I'm just going to plug that in. 9.50 and it's times t for the hours right so if i graph that i know i'm going to have a point here at zero zero and let's say i went to two hours would give me just under 20 right be about right there if I went to eight hours it's gonna give me just over 70 well 76 right so I know my lines gonna be somewhat like that it's not gonna go above it right and obviously you can draw a better line than me so part B Use the graph to determine who's, who is earning a greater rate of pay. And how do you know? Well, just by looking at the graph, I know Marcus's earnings, which is the blue line, stayed below, right? It stayed below just under. And I know I'm not doing it any justice here, but I know the points are always going to be underneath it, right? If I just look at the points, I know that it's always underneath that black line, which is Michaela's earnings. I also know Michaela earned um, $120 for 10 hours, right? If I went for K, that would give me how much? $12, right? So I know Michaela is earning more, right? So Michaela's earnings rise faster than Marcus's. Right, and we see that when we graph it. So for part C, it says, what information do you still need in order to solve the problem? Solve the problem and show your work. Well, what we still need is to find how much or how much they make after 40 hours, right? So how much money or how many how much earnings in 40 hours and I'm not putting a complete sentence here but you guys understand what I'm saying here all right so now that we know we need to find out how much in 40 hours right Michaela's I'm gonna get my K again right 120 over 10 which is just 12 now when I plug that in it's 12 times T and instead of T, I'm going to put in 40 hours, right? So when I multiply 12 times 40, I get $480. So Michaela makes $480 in 40 hours. Now, Marcus, on the other hand, I know the rate of or the constant of proportionality for him was 9.50, 950 an hour. So I'm going to plug that in. 
where a K would have been, right? And instead of T, I'm going to plug in 40 hours. Now, when I multiply that out, I get $380. So Marcus makes $380 in 40 hours. So who makes more in 40 hours? Michaela does, right? She makes like a hundred more dollars than he does. All right, everybody. So that's it for lesson five. Please make sure you guys watch the whole video. Make sure um, you complete all your work. Make sure you're submitting all your work, okay? Get credit for the stuff that you're doing. Um, hopefully this video helped you. I hope it did. If it did, please go ahead and click like so I know that it's helping. Um, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, you guys, take care.